How's it going everybody? In this video, I wanted to give everybody just kind of a... I've been working on deploying VXLAN fabrics through controllers as of lately, over the past few months. Um, it's actually pretty cool. So this fabric that you see right here is running inside of EVE Pro. Um, the same EVE server that I did my enterprise lab in, I just rebuilt it um, in a different topology. I've actually got a couple topologies running. Uh, it's so much nicer running e bare metal. But anyway, um, I deployed these Nexus switches and I'm using Data Center Network Manager, or DCNM for short, to deploy it, which is allows you to do a controller-based deployment versus doing a CLI-based deployment, or manual VXLAN fabric. So it's kind of cool how it all works. So what I'm going to do is I am going to walk you through some of the things that I've already done and some of the connectivity that's already in play and how all that type of stuff comes together and I'm going to be doing a little bit of configuration with it and you know how you can do different stuff with it. My plan was to actually do a full walkthrough of how you can configure all the different capabilities and stuff like that but I decided to just not do that and uh, you know walk through you know how do you configure certain things and there's going to be some stuff that we're going to do um, my intention with having so many servers as endpoints they're just routers that have the server icon is to walk you through a relatively easy deployment of some uh, a second VRF um, so think large-scale data center and or like a colo or something along those lines and you want to deploy uh, connectivity this way there is a way to do um, external connectivity, as you can see the CSR 1000 Vs up here. You need an iOS XE or newer device in order to connect to it, and I'll talk a little bit about how that comes into play. But uh, so you can build your fabric, uh, single switches, VPC switches, and then if you wanted to do so, you could even do uh, firewall connectivity or layer four through seven service insertion. So there's a lot of options available. I'm not going to be testing out the service insertion piece right now, only because of the fact that I really have, there's some specifics to it that I still have to work through. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward how it all comes together. So let me go ahead and pull up DCNM. Now this renders a lot better in Firefox, so I'm going to pull up this in Firefox. Um, the installation is pretty straightforward. This is just the OVA deployed inside of ESXi the way you normally would do it. It's a single node, but Cisco does recommend a three node deployment. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And we're going to get to the Data Center Network Manager. Now, when it comes to the way that DCNM operates, there's uh, the concept of you have the dashboard here, which shows you who you're connected to and all that good stuff that goes along with it and gives you an idea of how many devices there are and all that type of stuff and gives you, um, you know, it's a dashboard, right? It's like you log in, this is what it tells you. From a topology perspective, this is what we've built. I have my my fabric right here at the bottom, and then I have a couple of additional fabrics that allow me to connect externally to the fabric, which essentially would allow you to connect your um, your LAN connections. So if you've got you know Nexus switches that are acting as your core that are doing classical Ethernet, you know, typical layer two networking or maybe you've got some iOS XE devices, especially the newer networks today, anything Catalyst 9K, Catalyst 8K, they're gonna be running iOS XE, so you'll be able to join them into this configuration. You don't actually use DCNM to manage your iOS XE devices. You will allow DCNM to access the device, but you won't actually do anything with it through DCNM, you'll have to go through you know, either CLI or depending on if you've got DNA Center deployed and things like that. And all we're doing right here between CSR 27 and 28 to Nexus 7 and 20, uh, Nexus uh, 7K and Nexus 9K8, um, we're just doing an eBGB peering between the two. So here and here, and then here and here are eBGB peered. So if you want to do any operational stuff, you need to go to Control and then Fabrics. So we'll click on the Fabric Builder, and then you get uh, these different fabrics. You need to create a fabric first and then you can join devices to it and how that would come into play. So I'm going to uh, click on this guy real quick and then we'll see the fabric that we've got. Nexus 9K7 is uh, giving, it's having a 
hard time at the moment. I'm not sure exactly why it's out of sync. So let me go ahead and uh, resync fabric and see what's going on with that. Um, I haven't been in DCNM for this for a little bit, but you, uh, you'll you need management access to the devices. So in other words, what that means is you'll need uh, this network here. This is just connecting to my management interface and then I give DCNM on my IP address on my management network and then each one of the Nexus switches on the management zero interface I just give it an IP that's reachable and then once it's reachable then they are able to come in and uh, connect to wherever it's got to go so the fabric has been resynced let me see if there's a save and deploy maybe I'm missing something it's I haven't been in, in like a week so I honestly don't remember where I was at configuration wise with it so let's see what it says the cool thing about it too, there's other options in here. You can you know, keep track of your inventory, licensing, you know that type of stuff. Uh, from an administration perspective, you can do a lot of uh, other options and connectivity. And this is what I wanted to see if there's anything here that needs to be, okay, two lines. It's out of the sync, two lines are gonna be what? Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and close, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that. So it's basically telling me no interface gig one uh, eth one slash eight dot one oh one. So I'll go ahead and I'll just deploy that config. It'll remove and it's basically telling me there's no commands to execute and it deployed successfully. So now that will happen. And so what I'll do is I'll come over here. You'll need to have CLI access to the device. So we'll come over here and we'll log in as admin and then You'll need a uh, an eight character password to log into the switch. Um, oh, sorry, uh, DCNM, and then the password. Oh, you know what? Wrong pair of switches. No, this is right. There we go. So if I do a show IP interface brief VRF uh, cust one. We're going to see our connectivity uh, squared away, so that looks good now. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'll go to tabular view, and this will give you a tabular view of how everything comes together and gets put together. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, not a whole lot to it when it comes down to the operations side of the house. And then I'll come over here to, there's some other options as well, interfaces, networks, VRFs, and services, and you work your way down. You actually need to do, um, there's, a, there's a process for this. So let me go back to Fabric Builder and I'm going to get out of the way. And what I'm going to do is one step further back. I'm going to click on this DC1 is obviously my first data center. Oh, and the cool thing about this is you can run one instance of DCNM or typically it should be a cluster. And then you can have multiple fabrics being managed by it. So you're gonna have DC one could be obviously data center one, and you can manage all of your as long as you have IP connectivity to it, you can manage all of your data centers from DCNM. So if I come over here and I click on a little gear right here, it says Edit Fabric. Give that a second to pull up. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is what you really need to understand. And there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're doing your deployment. So if, it, if you already understand VXLAN, the, the protocol, or is it a protocol? I'll say it a capability, because it's not, it's not really a protocol in my opinion. The capability of VXLAN and all of the additional features that it supports uh, doing layer two extension, you know, inter VR, uh, inter segment connectivity, and all that type of stuff. If you understand how VXLAN works under the hood, this makes it so much easier to work with. If you don't know VXLAN under the hood, I don't recommend using a controller to do the deployment because you're going to struggle with understanding what's all needed. There's um, a lot of stuff that comes into play with how all this stuff works, but there's there's really only one input you need to give it. Uh, out of all the input options that are available, there's only one input you really need to give it, and that's the BGP autonomous system number. So this will be deployed globally. It supports both two byte and four byte ASNs. 
So if there is a capability you need to deploy, you would do that. And then as you walk through the tabs left to right, there's a lot of other capabilities that are available. So you can, if you want to do an IPv6 underlay, you can do that. I uncheck that. I'm not obviously not doing all of these, um, all the options available to me. If you want to change the underlying underlying routing protocol, you could do that with uh, go from OSPF to ISIS if you wanted to do so. Um, two route reflectors, you can do two or four. I've got two deployed. You don't need two. You only need one. Um, the Anycast Gateway MAC. You know, what do you want your SVI MAC addresses to be when you stretch your fabric out? Uh, from a replication perspective, do you want it to be multicast or do you want it to be ingress replication via unicast pointer? I'm doing multicast in this particular case and the multicast group that you're going to be doing. So uh, if you want to do um, uh, tenant routed multicast or TRM, you need to check that box. How many rendezvous points do you want? You can do uh, two or four. Uh, we're going to, uh, the route RP mode is going to be any source multicast. You can do uh, bi-directional if you want. And the underlay loopback, under, underlay RP loopback ID will be 254, so on and so forth. Then you would specify um, if you're going to be doing um, anything like that for it. If you want to do VPC, virtual port channel, you can to do that as well. There's going to be a peer link VLAN and all that type of stuff. And then to keep a peer keep alive, you would either do be a management or be a loopback. Um, there is no option to do back to back management, meaning connecting your management interfaces on both switches to each other through like a little six inch or one foot ethernet cable. You don't have the ability of doing that here. Um, the idea is you're managing your VXLAN fabric out of band. So you're pushing all the config to the device as time goes on. And so you're discovering your fabric through that, you're configuring your fabric through that, and then you're maintaining your fabric through that. If you want to add more capabilities, you can do so. And right now, all I've done for the most part is some basic connectivity. If I was to, um, if I go over here to the protocols, you obviously have all, all, the vari all the variables that you need to apply to your fabric. So it's going to be underlay routing protocol, the interfaces, the loopback addresses, your overlay connectivity with BGP, all the variables you need to, to implement on your fabric in order for your spines and leaf switches to be able to talk to each other are all done through here. And if you scroll down through, there's a lot of flexibility that comes into play with how this all works. If you go to advanced, you can look at your VRF uh, templates, your network extension template. So there's uh, you can't really mess with templates in this at this level. There's a lot of stuff that you would have to do um, from si inside the GUI um, to see what the options or capabilities are. And then resources, you know, what, what do you want to get for your subnet ranges? Stuff like that. Um, you know, if you're going to do your VNI ranges, your layer 3 VNI ranges, network range, VRF, subinterface, how do you want to deploy VRF light, you know, that type of stuff. Um, what are your subnets going to be for VRF light subnet range? You know, so on and so forth. And literally every variable that you need to think of when it comes to connecting your fabric together and then devices to connect to it from a access perspective, whether it's VPC or downstream switch, whatever it might be. So once you have all this figured out, you know, this is a good template so whenever I am looking at doing a deployment, uh, the first thing that I do is I open this up and I walk them through it. And because this would be essentially a spreadsheet, right? If you're working on a deployment, uh, you'll pull a spreadsheet together with all the variables that you need. And the problem with this is a lot of customers don't know what they need to know. So you'll have to walk them through what it is. So you're taking all the diff different capabilities that you know of that are needed in order to deploy and this basically is a templatizes it and then if you go to manageability you know what are you going to do for DNS and all that type of stuff uh, NTP, syslog, all that good stuff AAA if you're going to do um, if you're going to enable AAA for your devices this is something you would do here and then um, freeform config means that you will need to extrapolate it from 
the actual running config and you could paste it right here or whatever it might be so your um, for example your TACAC server your radius server your key all that type of stuff your authorization lists things like that all that stuff will have to be put in here from a bootstrap perspective you can do power on auto provisioning which is what Pope stands for power on auto provisioning so if you do that uh, you would have to give the information necessary in order for it to pull the data down and then point it to a server and then uh, I've never actually been able to get it to work so I wanted to test it out but whenever I've deployed Nexus I've never used power on under provisioning to do the job uh, configuration backup where do you want it to back up to and then thousand eyes if you want to do some sort of security integration uh, I've never actually worked with a thousand, with thousand eyes. I think that's kind of like, uh, like a live action or NetBrain. I think maybe I, I honestly don't remember how, what the uh, what that it do, does. Now at the top here, you name your fabric and then you will choose one of the many fabric options that are available. So if you want to do a fabric where you do uh, Easy Fabric 11.1, which is version DCNM 11.1. Then you would pull this in and you do the easy fabric easy fabric ebgp you're going to connect to outbound via ebgp if you're doing an external fabric fabric group or a fabric being you're connecting to non-nexus devices to connect outside of the fabric um i'm not exa i don't know what a fabric group is but then you have land classic where if you wanted to maintain the switch from a classical ethernet perspective that's how you would do that and msd is massively scalable uh, data centers so um, I never worked with this one either. I've never, the only one I've ever worked with is this one here and then external fabric. That's the only ones I've ever deployed because that's all the customers I've ever worked with have ever needed. Um, but what's cool is once you have that deployed, you would enter the fabric. So if I, if I was to come in here and create a fabric and let's say I was to call this uh, test and then go underneath the fabric template, let's say I do MSD fabric it's going to ask me what it is that I want to deploy. And then DCI, what is my um, my multi-site overlay interface? Um, this is for peering direct to border gateways. So this is if you were going to do a multi-site deployment, massively scalable data centers, and then you would have all your uh, implementation here, direct to border gateways, the manual way and then there's a, there's a password resources the loopback addresses you're going to be using again i've never tested this with dcnm but uh for the most part it wouldn't be that hard and then when you would do um you'd come in here and save the fabric and then now the fabric has been saved now you need to add switches to the um fabric settings normally you would do add switches here move fabrics uh, you know what I've never like I said I've never done this um, how this would come into play I don't know um, yeah I've, you'd have to move it in so I, this is one of those ones I had to play with I'm gonna go ahead and back out and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that fabric if you want to create another fabric and you want to say we'll do test and you want to do a land classic then Fabric monitor mode. You have your your details in here that you would use. You'd save it, and then as soon as you save it, it pops you puts you into the fabric itself. So here I would say add switches here, and I could come in again. I've never tested this. I assume that you'd be able to add in the same switches you've already added, and you'd be able to do the LAN classic config, which I rem if I remember correctly, if you're not doing VXLAN fabric connectivity with everything because there are certain cases where you're not going to want to uh, extend the VLAN and stuff like that. You would want to do basic stuff like that. Again, it's something I have to test out. Um, stuff like that. I'm, I'm not an expert in DCNM or Nexus dashboard, which is the 12.0 version of DCNM. I am a, uh, I've got a basic level of experience with it, but what I want to do now is I want to go through and once that deletes usually takes a minute 
I want to walk through a basic deployment of some stuff just so you guys can see how it works. The fabric has already been deployed. Um, now, while I'm waiting for that to do its thing, okay, there it goes. When you are doing your connectivity, so you add switches to your fabric, one of the things you're going to have to do, if we come in here and I click on the fabric, you'll notice that these switches look like they are, let me go ahead and scroll in here, if you notice how they're set up, you'll notice that they're they're kind of hier hierarchically built out, right? It's like, how did you get them to be in the position that they're in? Well, the, the answer to that question is simple. If you click at any one of these devices, you have a roll option you can set. And essentially what this does is by default, all of your switches are in the role of spine when they get in, uh, when they get ingested or they get discovered. So you're gonna do a discover first, you're gonna get to this point here, where there'll just be one big blob of devices. What you'll need to do then is set the role accordingly. I set for seven and, uh, seven and eight, I set the role to be border because that's the edge of my fabric. But for Nexus one and two, the role is set to spine. But for five and six, uh, three, four, five, and six, they're set to the role of leaf because they're acting um, as the device itself. So they're connecting downstream to an endpoint. Now, you notice in, uh, this fabric here that five and six, seven and eight are supposed to be VPCs. Well, if I look, if I come in here, I can go ahead and say, it says VPC pairing. It's gonna look back and forth and see that, um, that it's, it's possible. Now it says false right here. Um, it's because of the fact that I've got VRFs and networks attached. I can't remove the VPC config. I'd have to remove all the configuration from it first and then I'd be able to go through and remove the, uh, add the, um, unpair it. But once you unpaired it, and this is before you've done anything with the fabric, all you've done is a discovery at this point. Once you've done that, you'd be able to go through and you've paired it via the VPC. What you'd be able to do then is come up here to save and deploy. By clicking save and deploy, it's going to generate all the configs that are necessary for the fabric. Once you set the role, how you want it to end the VPC. Once you've done all that, what ends up happening, uh, actually I need to take a half step back. So as you're bringing the switches into the fabric, after you've discovered them, the moment you go through and you click to add them to the fabric itself, so if you were to go to say add switch, um, I don't have an extra switch to, to add in here, which you'd come in here and let's say you gave it 10.1.1.1, right? Um, and you'd set this to the preserve, uh, to no, to no hops and you had the username and password set. So you could access it via SSH. You set the max hops to zero and you preserve config means that you've already got a VXN fabric deployed. And this is gonna be a brownfield deployment. Brownfield meaning that it's already, the fabric is already deployed. All you wanna do is convert it from a manual to a controller based deployment. And you would wanna preserve the config, you'd say you start discovery. It would go out there and it would like reach out to that IP address or that range of IPs as you can see right here. And then it would, uh, as it discovers it, um, once you once it populates the list of devices, you would check the devices that you do want to bring in, and you click on import into fabric. What ends up happening at that point is all the switches are reloaded, and there's a little script that's sent to them that is basically allows you to um, bring them into the fabric and. It reboots them, and once it reboots them, it, you get this topology right here. But the problem is it's all one big jumbled mess, right? There, there's a reboot, and then the switches come online. If you do pre preserve config, I don't know if that actually happens or not. Um, I'm going to assume that it does. It's, I do want to deploy a fabric completely, and then go through and get um, tested out to see if that would do the same thing. I don't know. Um, my assumption is it's going to reboot. But when I do this, what's gonna end up happening is uh, you set the role after you've brought them to this point. So the, you get to this stage after you've rebooted. You reboot, the switches come back online, they show up here. Simply, this green means that they, they're, the DCNM can connect to the device and everything's looking good. And then you would set the role. The role is gonna determine what configuration is sent. Then once you've determined all of that and you have your VPC config in play, you're gonna say save and deploy. That's going to generate all the config dumps that are gonna end up happening. And then 
um, it, you're going to push the config. We're talking hundreds of lines of config are going to get pushed via SSH connections. And then once that process has happened, then the fabric will start to operate the way that you have built it inside of DCNM. Once you've gotten to that point, you'll then be able to start going over here to Fabric Builder and doing interfaces, networks, VRFs, and services. So I'm going to walk you through how to do some of that stuff based off of looking at how this is put together. And if I pull up my connectivity here and I look at, say, Nexus 9K3, I log in as admin and then the password. Oh, you know what? It's going to be admin and admin. That'll let me log in. So there's two different levels of login, one a CLI login, and then there's a DCNM login. If you do a show run at the beginning here, you'll see that there is a DCNM, which is how it's got a, a bigger password. It's longer, which is required for you to be able to connect in. Um, if we look at the uh, the way that it's configured, if you do show interface status, you'll see that we've got connections going to Nexus 9K1 and 2. And then I've got some devices connected. Uh, five and six are connected via VLAN 10. So what I'm going to be going through and doing, and if I do a uh, show NV, show NVE peers, I uh, do terminal with 150. We're going to see that I have peerings to two, four, six, and seven, which is what you'd expect to see. Um, all the connections are looking pretty good. So uh, that's working the way you would expect it to. Now, the key thing that you would need to understand now is the fabric is online, everything's looking good. If I do a uh, show Mac address table dynamic, you're going to see a couple of connections coming in. I would have to get the rest of these servers online and working in order for the rest of this to operate. And if I do a show port dash channel summary, I have a port channel uh, connected downstream to switch 9. Um, for all these devices right here because you can do a port channel over to an, a non nexus switch or to another switch That isn't going to be running attached to the fabric as a layer 2 connection So if you had downstream connections to other uh, switches or to servers you can uh, apply connectivity to them as well um, So if we go back over here to Firefox We go over here to let me get out of the way if we go to control and we go to um, interfaces we can configure the interfaces. The problem is, is it gives you a full dump of all the switches, which doesn't work out. So if we want to go back over here to Fabric Builder, and if it if it hangs, if you when you click in here, and you go to Tabular View, if the switches don't load right away, simply just refresh the web browser, and it should come through momentarily. We'll go back to DC One. We'll go to Tabular View, and then the switches populate right here. You can see that it's the VPC is working between five and six. If you want to do any link connectivity, this is where you would do it. So I've got external fabrics, um, DC1 to EBGP core, and I've got DC1 to EBGP core CSR28. So these are connections going back and forth that are going to be built to the outside world. So you would build them by going to, you would add a link, you would say the fabric type is going to be interfabric, VRF light, the external fabric setup, and then the destination fabric. You'd have to build a fabric ahead of time. So the fabric has got to be there in order for you to reference it. So that's basically how that would come into play and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a quick roll, little rollout of how this would work. Uh, if we come over here to VRFs, we have our VRF customer one. VRF ID is 50,000. If we continue, we're going to see that it is rolled out. If we go to detail view, we can see that VRF customer one is deployed to the borders and the lease switches and not the spine. Okay. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go back to the topology view and I'm going to go back over here. Um, if you look at the network and VRF deployment, if we look uh, network view, we can see that there is a network of customer one VLAN 10, right? So it's deployed and everything's working. 10.1.10.1 slash 24 is my gateway. That's deployed everywhere. And I can validate that by looking right here. If I do a show IP interface brief VRF customer one, that shows up. And if I was to pull up my endpoint connectivity, endpoint server 11, 
to show IP interface brief and ping 10.1.10.1, I can ping it. And if I was to look at server 12 and ping uh, 10.1.10.11, I should be able to ping. There it goes. It took a couple seconds for it to work. And if I do a show Mac address table dynamic for VLAN 10, I should see those guys coming through. And if I look at Nexus 9K5, admin and admin. Oops, I passed and typed it incorrectly. When I do a show Mac address table dynamic, I'm going to see these Mac addresses showing up on Nexus 9K5 with the NVE of 10303, which is telling me that they're approached, they're on uh, this guy. So what that would allow me to do then is Nexus 9K3, I, I'm on Nexus 9K5, I have devices attached to me downstream. So what I'll do is I'll go through and you'll have to create VLANs on Nexus 9K4, switch 10, you'll have to get connected up here, which I think I already had the VPC in play. And then we'll go switch 23, we'll put this into like customer one, VLAN 10 and 11, so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work through getting some of this other stuff configured. It's not marked here, but I'll walk you through what I'm gonna do before I do it. So I'm gonna go back over here to, um, I'm actually gonna take this off screen so you guys, I will have it for reference and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do before I do it. And then we'll look at the config and then I'll bring, once it's all configured, I'll bring you back to the topology. So. What I'm gonna go do first is if we look at Nexus 9K3, which is our first lease switch, show interface status, you'll notice that um, server 11 is this guy and server 12 is this guy. So I'm gonna go create another network and I'm gonna apply that to E15. So what I'm gonna do, and it's in the same customer bureau, so I'm gonna add a network this network ID is going to be, what am I going to use? So the network ID itself is going to be indicative of the VN segment command. So if we were to pull up this guy right here and do a shill run VLAN 10, you'll see that, oh, you know why? Okay, so I that's one thing I, I forgot to mention. The normal operational configuration is different when you deploy DCNN. Everything is deployed via profile. So let me go ahead and go full screen with this and get out of the way. We do a full show run, and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so we have these uh, profiles that get put into play here. We have a profile customer one, apply profile customer one VLAN ten. Now, if we go back up here a little bit, I'm not a hundred percent sure where it's going to show up. Let me scroll up a little bit. It is going to put it, okay, right here. So we have configure profile. It sits right above um, the VRF. No, sorry, the VRF is down here. Anyway, it's right up here. So we have this configure profile customer one, and we have the VLAN itself, and then the segment is 50,000, right? This is going to be your layer three VNI, right? This is gonna provide interconnectivity between all of your VLANs. If you look down here where it says configure profile customer one VLAN 10, you've got VLAN 10 with VN segment 10,010, interface VLAN 10, the VRF application, the IP address, the tagging so that it's easy for advertisement into BGP, fabric forwarding, most, uh, fabric forwarding mode, any cast gateway. And then if you look underneath the way that the interface uh, and interface MBE one member VNI 10,010 and then the multicast group that gets applied to it. If you look under the the profile of customer one member VNI 50,000 associate VRF. So this is where the configuration gets applied. It doesn't get applied where you normally would see it inside the CLI if you're doing a manual fabric. So that's one of the things to keep in the back of your head when you're working through this. So let me go ahead and go back over here. So I'm going to actually minimize this. This guy right here, I'm gonna make, the network ID here is gonna be uh, 10,011. The network name is gonna be 
customer one dash VLAN 11. Customer one VRF is where it's going to be. If you don't already have the VRF, you can go ahead and create it right here if you want to. Uh, if you want it to be layer two only, which means it's non routable, that's an option as well. The IP and gateway and NetMask 10.1.11.1 slash 24. And we can go ahead and say cust1 VLAN 11. Something simple like that. Uh, the VLAN ID, you must specify that here or it's going to propose a VLAN of 2300 because that's coming from the pro that uh, the fabric template. I'm going to say VLAN 11 because that's what we need. You can, you can override a lot of the default features if you want. From an advanced perspective, if you want to do DHCP, the route tag, um, I am going to say enable layer 3 gateway on border because we want it to be routable. Um, all that other stuff looks good. So if it was going to be ingress replication um, or ARP suppression, I'm going to, would be that. So I'm going to go ahead and say create network. So the network has been created now. I'm going to go ahead and the thing is that it hasn't been deployed to any interfaces yet. So if you want to do an interface group, you can do that too. I'm going to go ahead and say continue. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this this option right here and it's going to ask me where I want it to deploy it. So I get to go ahead and highlight those guys. And I can go ahead and if I want to specify the interfaces, it'll let me define the interfaces. So I'm going to go actually go ahead and click on this. That's okay. So I click this option and I want to add seven and eight as well. Okay. So now I get to go ahead and screwed me up here. Um, and then we're going to say deploy. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, it's easier. I find it easier to do the detailed view because you can, you can do this if you want to. Let me go uncheck that real quick. I'm going to say detail view. And what I want to do is I'm going to select this, um, which checks all of these guys. And then I'm going to say quick attach. Because right now there's nothing attached. So quick attach. This will attach the network to all switches. Yep, that's fine. So now, after a couple seconds, the status should be pending, which it is. And now I'll be able to come in and I'll be able to click on this guy right here on Nexus 9K Edit. And then I can define the interface that I want it to attach to. So in this case here, I don't want to do it to, I'm going to cancel that one. That's fine. Um, not on Nexus 9K8. I want to make this config change on, I want to do E15 and E1 three on four and five of three so nexus 9k3 nexus 9k4 five on nexus 9k3 we're going to do e15 so let's go ahead and let me do that real quick so a nexus 9k5 i'm going to say edit and then the interface that i want this to get deployed to on five and six So I'm sorry, I meant to say three, by fault. Let's check that. Nexus 9K3, edit. Here, I'm going to apply this to E15. Right there, and then I'm gonna click on OK. Save, and save. Now on Nexus 9K4, do the same thing. Edit interfaces and then I'm going to choose E13 on Nexus 4 just like this click on save save okay now that that's done I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to go click on preview this is going to show me what configuration is going to get deployed it's going to get pushed to all the switches but it's not going to get applied to the interfaces. So you can see the profile that you're creating. If I go to 9K3, 
I can see that it's going to go to E15, switch port access VLAN 11. If I go to Nexus 9K4, it's going to tell me switch port trunk allowed VLAN at 11. Now, there's a problem with that config though, right? We don't want that interface to be configured as a trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now what I get to go do, the configuration is kind of in, in a limbo situation at the moment. So I'm going to go back to uh, here. I'm going to go to Fabric Controller, or Fabric Builder, excuse me, DC1. And then on Tabular View, the switches aren't going to be like in that. So I'm going to go ahead and re redo that. I need to configure E13 on this switch on Nexus 9K4. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to say Interfaces. It's going to populate the interfaces. I'm going to go ahead 9K4, 9K3. Right, I'm going to click on this guy right here. I'm going to go over here to Edit. And I'm going to, oh, it won't let me do it. OK. I think I might have to do that. OK, so I want to allow, I want that to be a access port. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because it's already, I'm going to go ahead and just save and deploy. I can always update the config later. Just trying to save myself a step. So it's generating the VPC configuration. And it's going to show me what the options are here. So it's not going to do for ne anything for Nexus 9K1 and 2. But for 4, it is... Yeah, switch port mode trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and that's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and say deploy config. And then after a moment or so, we should get that to deploy. And it will do its thing. All the other switches are going to go ahead and deploy. It'll take just a minute for it to finish doing its thing. And then we'll be in good shape. If there's any issues, they'll pop up right here. All right, so the config will be deployed correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Nexus 9K4 is not correct though. I'm gonna go ahead and let's uh, back out once and back to tabular view. Switches. Let me go to control and networks. Awesome. So now I get to go back to control, fabric builder, DC1. Yeah, every once I every once every once in a while when I do that, it's, well actually it seems like anytime I navigate away, it bugs out. So not that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and back into DC1 Fabric Builder. It is kind of a pain. Go to Tabular View and Nexus 9K4. Um, interfaces. Should populate the interfaces. We can see that this is now Customer 1 VLAN. I'm going to click on here. Go to Edit. Yeah, see, it's not letting me update that. I may have to pull the config off that interface and then do that. Not that big of a deal, but. Um, you can do this, I should be able to go to 4 and edit that. Yeah, see, because it's a, since it's applied to a policy, you can't do it. Um, you can't edit that. So I'm going to go back to Control and then Networks. And then I'll click on this guy here, Edit. No, sorry, not here. Um, continue. detail view. And what I'll do is I will on 9K4 I'll come in here and edit and then I'll say uh, see I can't adjust the I wish I could adjust the, the, tr the port type but I can't. Uh, so now I'm going to click on save. So I'm unchecking it from that. I'm going to go ahead and save and then I'm going to go to deploy. And that should should deploy here in just a second. 
Once it does, I'll be able to go back to the switch at the interface level and make the adjustment. Now the question would probably come up, well, can't you just log in via the CLI and just change the config? You can. The problem is, is that whenever a scan of the fabric is done to check where it's at, it's going to show up as out of sync because you're no longer using the CLI to do the config, you're using the um, DCNM to do it. So let me go back over here to Fabric Builder and then we should be able to click DC1 tabular view refresh. I wish it would render but it doesn't. Now I could just do it via interfaces. I could go this way. right? I could scroll all the way down 9k4 and go to E13. I could come in here and go to edit and move this to be access host that. I could define the VLAN if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. I'm going to click on preview. It's going to show me the configs of what it's going to do. No shutdown. I'm going to go ahead and deploy that. And after a moment or so, it should flip over to be an access connection. There it goes. And if I go E13 is now access. So now I'll go back over here to, to uh, networks. Click on OK, and then from the drop down, I'm going to go to DC1. I'm going to go to continue. Oh, this guy right here. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to go to continue. I'm going to click on detail view. I'm going to click on 9K4, edit, interfaces, and I'll say E13, save. There are, there's freeform config that you can add here if you want to, I never use it. Click on OK, save, and uh, deploy. Once you do that, then what should end up happening is the interface will be configured as an access port, respectively on 9K4. We go ahead and log into him. Show interface status. We can see 1.3 is there, perfect. So. That's basically how that would work out. So we configured it through the GUI. It's in progress. And it's connected via VLAN 11. So show run interface ETH 1 slash 3. Switch port X is VLAN 11. Perfect. So now that that's done, let me go ahead and bring over back our topology. And let me go ahead and pull up these guys so and we pull up my other one here which is all the servers so on server 11 and 19 server 11 oh, let me go to 19 while I fat finger things go to global config I'm gonna type in host name is gonna be SRV 19 uh, no IP routing Type in IP default gateway is going to be 10. Dot, whoops, 10.1.11.1. Interface gig 0 slash 0. MAC address is going to be 0.0.0011.0019. So it's very obvious to who it is. IP address here will be 10.1.11.19 10 slash 24. Say no shut and do right. Back over to 11, go to global config, uh, IP default gateway will be 10.1.11.1. We're going to say that the IP address interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address here will be 10.1.11.11 slash .11 24. Do show IP interface brief, do right. Now, if I go to this guy, I do a show MAC address table dynamic, 
I should see 11, 11 being, refer, being reachable this way. If we go to three and I do a show Mac address table dynamic, I should see 1119 being reachable this way. Okay, now what I'm gonna go do is from here on 11, I'm gonna go ahead and ping 10.1.11.19 and I should be able to ping it. And I can, that's a great sign. I should also, on server 12, show IP interface brief, be able to ping him. So from server 19, ping 10.1.10.12. Might take it a couple seconds for the ping to figure itself out. Let me look at 12. Show IP route. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, no IP routing. So what I'm doing by doing this is I'm turning off the ability of it being able to route on its own. And I need to set an IP default gateway of 10.1.10.1. Now if I do that and I save, what should end up happening now is if I have a ping 10.1.10.1, I should be able to ping my gateway, and then I should be able to ping 11.19, and I can, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So if I was to do a trace route to that one, 10.1.11.19, numerically, you're gonna see me hit uh, my gateway, and I'm gonna get, uh, so I'm getting routed, so it's a bridge route, route bridge. So I'm being bridged in, routed over to the other switch, 9K4, and then I am being bridged to VLAN 11, and then I'm being bridged out. So that's how that comes into play. Everything's working the way you would expect it to, and that's essentially what you need to, the basics of how you would configure an interface. So there's some, there's some cool stuff that you can do with this. Um, I don't have, I'm, we're closing, on, closing in on the one hour mark, so I am going to finish deploying this. I wanted to throw kind of a teaser video of how DCNM works and stuff like that. I need to go through and basically wipe the config on all these switches and actually do the process. I want to do this for DCNM. I also want to do this for Nexus dashboard and how all that would come together, obviously, and then uh, play around with the different capabilities uh, that are available to us. So as you can see, it does get kind of tricky when you're playing around with it and understanding the GUI. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to spend the time learning VXLAN underneath the hood and all the nooks and crannies of all the configurations, this is kind of a fast way of doing it. If you're working with somebody that knows how to operate it, that's the key thing and what you need to do and where you need to do it. So. Um, again, I don't think learning VXLAN from scratch this way is a good idea, but if you just want to get a fabric up and running like lickety split, this is a good way to do it. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys.